Hey everybody, let's take some time and let's turn this into a paper test. Um, a paper test, like kids actually get something handed to them and there's a blank to fill in, right? So Google Forms is great for making for making quizzes. But let's say that this is a time where it actually needs to be a paper document. So let's do fill in blanks the right way. So let's let's highlight over here. We have three questions that we want to turn in to fill the blanks. And let's go ahead and let's number this list so we can put numbers automatically in front of them. And notice this is nice. It's indented it by a quarter of an inch just to kind of make that fill in the blank pop a little bit. I'm going to go to this line spacing tool and I'm going to add space before each list item. And what this is going to do is now there's going to be actually just a little bump of space between each question so I don't have to like actually manually enter those spaces and it's going to give the kids enough room to be able to write their answer in. We don't have a blank yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the numbers. Notice it highlights all the numbers together in this list. And I'm going to um, ask you to just activate the secondary click. That might be an alt click or a right click or a command click, a control click, whatever it is on your device. And I'm going to go to this menu that probably no one ever goes into, edit prefix and suffix. And what I'm going to do is after the dot, I'm going to enter in 25 underscores. So bear with me for one second here. Best guess at 25. And I'm going to click, oops, before I click OK, I want to apply this to the entire list. Click OK. And now I have a blank um, after each of those items. That's looking pretty good. And what's beautiful about this is if I go here and I add another option, look at that. It gave me space, and now I can type in my question four, and my blank is already there, and I don't have to type in 25 spaces in front of each one. But there's a couple things that are bugging me just a little, little bit. So I'm going to highlight over all of our questions. And this bugs me, that the question one is really, 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 really long, and I'm seeing the text of my question underneath my blank. The only thing I want on that side are just the blanks and my students' answers, not part of the question. So what we have to do with this is we have to create a hanging indent. So I'm going to grab these little tools that are on the ruler. And if you don't see the ruler, you're going to have to go here to view and open up your ruler. But since I already have the ruler on, I'm going to highlight over my questions, highlight all four questions, and I'm going to grab that little triangle and I'm going to drag that triangle Okay, so now that's the end of the line. I want to drag the triangle right here. It looks like it's right on two and a half inches. Oh, it looks like I just broke it, right? But here's what we're going to do. This little box is where does the first line start? I want the first line to start way over here at a quarter of an inch in. Look at that. Now that's beautiful, because look at this, question one, even though it's really, 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 really long, is now all over here on the right, and the only thing over here on the left are the blanks. Okay, let's move on. You guys are pros. Let's go look at matching. Uh, matching gets a little bit more difficult. Same tricks though, right? We're going to highlight over the three questions. We're going to number them. We're going to go apply a little extra line spacing. We're going to click on the numbers, activate our secondary click, and edit the suffix and the prefix. This time, though, I'm going to add a space and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven underscores to make the blank. Apply to the entire list. And now I have, I have my blank. Let's click in here and let's apply a hanging indent again since now we have this skill. So I'm going to drag this over. Remember, here's where it was at the beginning. So we're going to want to drag this back over to this spot again. Let's drag it to the end and let's just add a little bit of extra space. Remember, it looks like I broke it again, but now it's all starting here. Let's go take this guy, drag him back over. That's looking pretty sharp. 
Here's my options. I don't want those numbers numbered. I actually want to letter those. So I'm going to click the options. I've created those as an option. And we are going to make sure that we can use Google Docs, uh, one of their more recent tools that they've added. I'm going to format this as a series of columns. I'm going to go with two columns. So my questions are on this side and my options are over here on this side. Now I'm going to purposely break this a little bit. Now I see this up here and I want my options to start at the top. So I'm going to try to get rid of that space. I'm going to highlight it and delete it. You know, okay. So now my question three has moved over to the right side of the column and I don't want it over here. I want it over here instead. So go to insert, column break, and now I have my option starting at the top, but it's starting on option C, and somehow this has gotten numbered, so I'm going to go and delete, delete. Notice these change to option A, B, C. If I want to make this a tougher quiz and I want to add option four, notice I can do that, and let's make it really super hard, and let's add a different option here. So um, if I hit enter, Notice the way it's renumbered everything, relettered everything for me. Option alternate. Okay, so I can easily um, move those things around like that. The last type of question we're going to do is the toughest to be able to do on Google Docs. And um, really, there's other tools that are better for doing multiple choice questions. I love. Um, Google Forms, um, maybe the uh, test editing software that comes with your textbook, um, if you still use textbooks, um, uses this. But I want to show you a couple quick tricks so you can make it. Please don't make 80 question multiple choice tests in Google Docs. You'll probably, um, you'll probably be so frustrated by the end. But let's give you a really good structure so you could maybe just copy this structure and have a little less frustration with making them. Okay, same tricks, right? We got to number it, so we'll number it. Then we'll go and we'll apply a little extra space. Then we're going to go highlight the question, number, and we're going to do our alternate click, edit the prefix, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven underscores, apply it to the entire list, click OK. And let's go in and let's do our hanging indent trick again. Remember here we are starting, we want to bring that block back to here. So let's go and drag this over. And here's the end of the line. And this is where we moved it, just one notch past one inch. But then we need to drag this guy back over. Now it looks exactly like the matching blanks up above. So now we're set there. Now, this is, um, I could have Google automatically letter these for me. Um, I'm going to encourage you not to, um, just for the sake of less confusion when you're editing. So you're just going to manually type um, A period and your option, and let's add another one, D period, and I'm going to press the tab button, and it's going to zip me over a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to type in another option. So now we're going to highlight all of these, and we could use these tools here where we could increase the indent, and we could zip it over to where we want it. Notice that sends it like half an inch each time you do that, but since we now have this skill set, we're going to come over and we're going to drop that there. And you know what? That's looking pretty good. Now, if we have long options, though, what we're going to do just to be safe, let's move this like this, and we're going to move the first one like that. And if we need to come in and add another option, all we need to do is do option E, period, tab, and then we type our other option. So now, what we should be able to do is copy this all and go down below. And if I paste question two, question three, question four, that's pretty slick. 
And now you can go through and you could just um, type out your questions or maybe you're slinging some old tests into Google Docs and then you could do a whole lot of copy and pasting in. All right, I hope you learned a couple things about um, the ruler here and how to use that, as well as some tricks to actually make a test that looks like a paper test. Thanks for listening.